Yo best, yo best, yo best. That shit crazy. On a Saturday. It's all leaving with your boy Barry Grant. You can catch me on Instagram and Twitter at All Even Podcast. You can listen to the show on Podbeam as well as Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Deezer. I'm all over the place, man. And trust me, go to YouTube, hit that subscribe button, like, share, and comment because the page is growing, baby. That All Even Wave. Get on that wave. Don't get left behind. Lots to get into. It's all NBA tonight again. Recap. We're going to go over the games that happened on Friday as well as today. Lots of stuff to get into. No dummy of the week this week because guess what? De Blasio still has the title, so he still owns it. There's nobody else that stepped up to the plate this week. So let's just get right to it, shall we? We had some good games on Friday as well as today. So I just want to get into that recap for what happened on Friday. We had the Knicks and the Hawks. Game three in Atlanta. Atlanta was juking. Fans were all into it. Atlanta wins the game 105 to 94. Trey Young really was able to do whatever the hell he wanted to do. 21 points, 14 assists. He was in the lane every play. Everybody scored. Capella, Hunter, Collins. They had like six or seven guys in, in double digits, man. So the Hawks did exactly what they had to do. But the Knicks. Knicks are the story here. And the reason why the Knicks are the story is because of Julius Randle. I'm not going to lie to you, man. If I were to read off his stat line to you, you'd be like, nah, that, that a professional didn't put a game like that together. So I'm going to read it to you. 35 minutes, 2 for 15 from the field, 14 points, 11 rebounds, 5 personal fouls. He's supposed to be the most improved player, the number one option on your team, and he gives you that as a performance. What can you say? Where do you turn? Derrick Rose had a great game, 39 minutes played, 30 points, 6 rebounds, 5 assists. He actually looked like Derrick Rose of old in that game. He had his bounce being very aggressive, going to the paint, hit, hit some threes. But where is the help coming from for Derrick Rose? This is two straight games now that Derrick Rose has had phenomenal games. Game two, he saved the Knicks from losing that game. Game three wasn't enough. R.J. Barrett, nowhere to be found. Two for nine, seven points. Second-year player, I'm not going to give him too much crap for that, but they got to be better, man. Taj Gibson, four points, and he's a starter. Nerlens, 12-8, and got hurt. Frank Nilekin is getting no minutes. Quigley, 15 minutes. Alec Burks, who had that big game, too, eight points. So there's a lot of issues with the Knicks. You can be able to say that their secondary scoring or their bench unit or whatever you want to call them, they didn't produce. I'm putting the blame on Julius Randle. I've seen Danilo Gallinari cut this man off in a playoff basketball game. Spin him around, cut him off, make it hard for him offensively. That's not the way... Nick fans envisioned this series to look. I think that they thought that Randall was going to do exactly what he did in the regular season. In four games against the Hawks, Randall averaged like 30-something points against his team. Easy, light work, right? <laughs> Wrong. Playoffs are a different animal. Like I keep telling y'all, coaches don't game plan for players in the regular season. They go from town to town game to game, and they just barely practice. They got their fundamentals. They will watch some film. They'll do some walkthroughs. But they're not strategizing for a particular matchup in the regular season. But come playoff time, you better believe that they got that thing working. 
You better believe that they have the scouts, the advanced scouts. They're chiming in on defensive assignments, defensive schemes on certain guys. And who did they pinpoint? Julius Randle. The guy who really can't go right, who's worked on his game a ton this season, but he still has a lot of holes in his game. And Nick McMillan is one of the best defensive minds in this game. He realizes that. And he understands that he has a big advantage over a guy that's very one-dimensional. What is Julius Randle going to be able to do to offset this? What can he do? Well, what he can show me is the ability to adjust. The ability to use Danilo Gallinari's aggressiveness on defense against him. Pump fake. Do a step back. Post up. Make sure the lane is clear so you're not bulldozing into the paint and there's four guys around you. Stop going so deep into the lane where you can't have angles to pass the ball anymore because he does that a lot. Bailout passes is what I call it. So there's a lot of issues that the Knicks are having, and it's basically what their quote-unquote number one option. It's not a number one option. He's had a great season. However, what you're seeing out of him right now is exactly why I said on Twitter, if you want to sign him, fine, but the Knicks front office should be very wary of signing him to a super max contract. That's all I'm saying. Not telling you not to sign him, but just be careful. Because this is probably what you'll sign up and get. This is it. Regular season dynamo, playoff choker. Which one would you rather have? Regular season success or playoff success? Now, granted, it can go hand in hand, right? In order for you to get playoff success, you have to get through the regular season. So, okay. You need both. Guys earn their money, their legacies, their big-time respect in this league in the postseason. And what we've seen out of Randall over these three games is really, really disappointing. Surprising? No. Disappointing? Absolutely. And also, too, blame de Blasio. I said it. Dummy the week, de Blasio on Tuesday. Like I said, he's the winner this week. There's no challenges for that crown. De Blasio set the Knicks up for failure. For you to be able to flap your gums like that and talk some nonsense about Trey Young, I'm, now, now it's justified if he goes out there and cooks y'all. And you have de Blasio to blame. There's no urgency to sign any, <laughs> sign any bills or anything like Come on, man. Do something else with your time. I don't need to hear your analysis on Trey Young and these Knicks. Don't even care. It's bad enough you had a Nets hat on and, and jersey on and you don't know what side you picking, bro. Come on, man. <laughs> Pick a side, man. You can't fence ride, man. So if anything goes off kilter with the Knicks, if they end up losing the series... Blame de Blasio. That's all I'm saying. That's what I'm telling my listeners and Nick fans to do. Blame de Blasio. Write a letter. Say, hey, how you doing, Bill? Um, I just want to write this letter to you to show you that we hold you accountable for this loss. You need to issue an <laughs> you need to issue an apology. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Sorry goes a long way, man. To be able to just have a press conference, hey, listen, I want to talk about something serious, you know, something real, real touching. I, I just want to say to the New York fans, I I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> That'll be fine. I'll take that. I'll take that. In other news, Nets and Celtics game three was a doozy. Kyrie Irving comes back to the Boston Garden and they're booing him out of the gym and he loves it 
He understands what's going on. He loves the atmosphere. But what happens? Celtics actually win this game. Shockingly. 125-119. Jason Tatum goes off. 50 points. 16 of 30 from the field. The guy was just electric. But the, the real heroes of this game... Tristan Thompson, 19 and 13. Marcus Smart, 23 points. Evan Fournier, 17 points. It's such a weird game because had Tatum not scored every single point of that 50, there's a high, high possibility that they lose that game. Because Campbell Walker gives you six points in 34 minutes. Awful. Listen to the bench unit. Grant Williams, 11 minutes, 4 points. Aaron Neesmith, 9 minutes, no points. Reggie Williams, 6 minutes, no points. Peyton Pritchard, 6 minutes, no points. Romeo Langford, 27 minutes, 6 points. They got nothing out of this team and still Won a basketball game. You want to know why? Because Brooklyn's defense is just not that good. They're not. James Harden has a great game. 41 points, 7 rebounds, 10 assists. KD follows that up with 39. Kyrie has a bad game. It only ends up with 16 points. Struggle from the field. And they, too, had bench issues. Joe Harris didn't didn't have a, a great game. So, Blake Griffin... Chad Griffin is what I call him now. Four points, five rebounds, five personal fouls. Awful. They couldn't stop anybody. There was no defense. So they deserve to lose this game, but are they going to lose the series? No. I don't see that happening. I see the Nets winning this series in five games. If it goes six, cool, but it's not going anywhere past six. That's that's what's going to happen here. So, great win for the Boston Celtics, but it's going to be short-lived. In the nightcap of last night, Clippers and Mavericks. Clippers end up winning this game 118-108. to It was a good game for the duo. Kawhi Leonard, 36 points, 8 rebounds. Paul George, 29 points, 7 rebounds. So, they did their thing. They did exactly what they were supposed to do. And just like I said, I had a feeling that Marcus Morris would have a good game. 34 minutes, 15 points, 3 of 5 from from 3. He had a good game. Reggie Jackson, what a great game for him. 16 points, 34 minutes. So they got production from guys that they really needed production from. Hats off to them. Rondo uh, had a... Rondo type of game, six points, four rebounds, eight assists. So guys were able to find the basket, find each other, play some unselfish basketball, and, you know, upset a a, a team like Dallas that was hot. Now, granted, Luka is still the man, right? Luka had 44 points, nine rebounds, nine assists. Tim Hardaway, 12 points. Max Kleber, he had 14. Jalen Brunson added 14 as well. But where are the problems in this game? Well, Finney Smith, 3 for 10 from the field in 38 minutes, 6.7 rebounds. Awful. Porzingis, 34 minutes, 3 for 10 from the field, 9 points. Awful. And guess what? Three rebounds to go with it too. So you're 7-3. You played 35 minutes. You grab three rebounds. Are you kidding me? This is why I've always had a problem with Porzingis. It's not the fact that the kid is not talented. Is that what is his identity? Is is he strong enough to be able to last in the NBA as long as he wants to? I don't know. But it's starting to look like that's the answer is no. And Luka is going to need another sidekick. He needs a number two. 
because this unit that they have is not working. Yes, they can be able to beat these Clippers. Yes, they shot a, a decent percentage from three. But at the end of the day, they have to get more scoring. Porzingis cannot have a nine-point game. Not against that weak-ass front line that the Clippers have. It's asinine, really. Doesn't really make sense. So, do I feel that the Clippers still have a chance to win this series? No, I don't. I believe that Dallas will win game four. They'll get the split that they're asking for, that they want. Going back 3-1 to L.A. And you know what this team does in regards to pressure, don't you? Oh, we all know the answer. They're going to fold. Fold like party chairs. Very easy, too. <laughs> so I'm looking to see what happens, but I I'm not confident that the Clippers can be able to rebound and make this a series again. Because if they can get it to 2-2, that means now it's the best out of three. And anything can happen in the best of three. So, we'll see what happens. I don't have much faith in the Clippers because they're the Clippers. What do you want me to say? You know, they're not somebody that I really take seriously until they start taking themselves seriously. That's pretty much it. So, recap for today's games. Bucks and Heat game four. Bucks beat the hell out of the Heat, 120 to 103. Brooke Lopez paces the, the, the scoring for the Bucks at 25. He had eight rebounds. Chris Middleton, 20 points, 11 rebounds. Giannis had 20 points, 12 rebounds, 15 assists. What a big game. So they got balanced scoring from everybody. Everybody. And kudos to the Milwaukee Bucks for getting revenge, vindication. They lost to this team last season. I picked them to lose to this team last season. They did. I picked the Bucks to beat the Heat this season. They did. This Bucks team is ready. I believe that they're more championship ready than any other season that they've they've had. In regards to the Giannis era, not the Oscar Robinson era or the Lou Alcindor the era. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about right now in regards to what they have. Can they compete? Can they win a championship? Hell yeah. Hell yeah, they can. So, for the uh, Miami Heat now, you know, it's back to the drawing board. Back to square one. Um, Bam out of Bayou, 20 points, 14 rebounds. Jimmy Butler had a triple-double, but they need scoring out of him. They don't need him to be Steve Nash. They don't need him to be Jason Kidd. So they, they got some production, but it just wasn't enough. And it's it's really disheartening that Udonis Haslam possibly played his, his last game in the NBA. Consummate professional. Uh, you know, he was trying his best to rally his team and rile his team up, get them fired up, throwing chairs and stuff. Like, he was always a great teammate. Always knew exactly how to get through the guys and... You know, if, if he wants to be a coach, it, Haslam is going to have a lot of suitors, a lot of opportunities. So, shouts to Haslam, shouts to a stellar career, one of the best, you know, hard-nosed guys that we've had in the in the NBA. So, you know, whatever he decides to do is definitely going to be something worthwhile because he's a he's a good he's a good dude, good individual, man. Um, where do the Bucks go from here? The Bucks have either the Nets or the Celtics on their minds. And everybody knows that it's going to be Brooklyn. So we're headed for a Brooklyn against Milwaukee matchup. It's a it's going to be amazing. I, I can't wait for that particular showdown. There's so much star power in that series. I'm sure that there's going to be some bad blood as well between, you know, Giannis and, and Harden. So there's a lot of subplots that I'm interested in seeing. Can't wait. Really can't wait. Next game after this is going to be the Blazers and Nuggets. Blazers win 115-95. to I was recording a new show 
Um, shouts to G Money. And I'm watching the score, and I'm just like, yo, they was just up like five. Now they up 20. You know what I mean? 30, 35. So the fact that they won the game by 20, trust me, it was it was a bigger beating than that. So kudos to Portland for locking up the series or evening the series, as they would say. C.J. McCollum, 21 points, 8 assists. Norman Powell, 29 points, 4 for 4 from 3. He had a great game. Dame only had Dame only had 10 points. Didn't have to do much. Struggle from the field, 1 for 10, 8 rebounds, 10 assists. So got guys involved. Carmelo Anthony had a good game. So they did exactly what they needed to do in regards to shoot well this game and get guys confident, get guys going. For the Nuggets, Jokic, the MVP, 16 points, 9 rebounds. Though so I was having a conversation with, with, with some of my homies, and they saying I was a little too hard on, on, on Jokic. Oh, nah, he didn't have such a bad game. 16 and 9, he shot 7 of 18 from the field. Bad game. Bad game. Campazzo, 12 points on 3 of 10 shooting. Bad. Michael Porter Jr. only had 3 points. Aaron Gordon, 6 points. Just a terrible game all around. So, it's now a series. It's now very compelling. What is going to be able to happen here? Is it going to be a situation where Portland takes advantage Portland now feels that they can be able to beat Denver and pushes Denver to the brink. Is that possible? Hell yeah, it's possible. This Denver team is really, really good. But when you're missing a guy like Jamal Murray, oh, it hurts. It really, really does hurt. So for them to be able to see if they can bounce back in a game five situation, it's possible, yes. But is it plausible is it very possible or very likely to happen no no I do think that Portland has seized the momentum here but then again Portland won the first game lost the last two so it's very possible that this can happen again it's a very hard series to read these two teams have have some similarities I I like both rosters so You know, it's really fun to watch for me to have some team blow out the other. On to the nightcap between the Philadelphia 76ers and the Washington Wizards. Philly beats the hell out of the Wizards, 132-103. to My MVP, Joel Embiid, 28 minutes, 14 of 18 from the floor, 36 points, 8 rebounds. The guy was just phenomenal. Euro steps, step backs, three point shots, post ups, spins, dunks in the lane. There was nothing that you can do against Joel Embiid tonight. He was just hot. And can somebody tell me when Danny Green found his shot again? Because the entire season last season, when he was with the Lakers, he couldn't buy a basket. Couldn't buy a basket in the regular season, couldn't buy a basket in the playoffs. All of a sudden now, He's the Toronto Raptors, Danny Green. Can't miss. Can't miss. So he definitely must have stole a DeLorean, went back in the time, like, because I just don't, I, I don't understand what's going on with him. Tobias Harris, always a good scorer, 20 points, 13 rebounds. Ben Simmons had another particular game, 14 points, 5 rebounds, 9 assists, so They did exactly what they had to do. I think Seth Curry had a big game, which was huge for uh, Philadelphia to get his confidence going, get him going in the right direction. But Washington, we all know exactly what Washington is. Washington is just a team that, you know, no matter how hard they try, they don't have enough to win. Hachimura is a really good player, really decent guy, but... He's not a he's not a starting power forward. Westbrook had 26, 12 and 10, another triple double for him. Congratulations. Bradley Beal, 25 points. But he was one for eight from three. Could not buy a basket behind the arc. So 
can they catch lightning in the bottle for maybe one game and stretch this series out another game or two? No. Maybe another game. But I don't see two games. Hell no. And what's really likely to happen is that Philadelphia closes out the series in four. And they go ahead and sweep the Wizards and then await the New York and Atlanta series winner. So they're going to be on cruise control regardless. They can be able to rest guys, get some extra work done in regards to shooting, drills, walkthroughs, break down some film, practice, whatever it is. They're going to be well rested after this because I don't see the Wizards winning any game in this series. Now let's get into the previews for tomorrow as well as Monday. Suns and Lakers game four. Chris Paul is still banged up, does not look like himself. They may have to sit him. Devin Booker didn't play well in game three as well, but DeAndre Ayton did. You had Cameron Payne also play well. So do the Suns have a chance? No. Lakers are going to win this game and win it big. 115 to 97. LeBron James and AD, they continue to pace the Lakers. I believe that Wesley Matthews is going to have a good game as well. So expect the Lakers to dominate, dominate early and take a big time, big time advantage in the series. 3-1 going back to Staples. Not a good situation for the Suns at all. Next game after this is going to be between the Hawks and the Knicks. We have game four. And I'm going to stick with my original guns to say that the Knicks are going to win this series in seven. So if that's the case, Knicks win this game right here. 105-99. Julius Randle still continues to struggle, but I believe that RJ is going to have a good game. I believe everybody else around... Uh, Julius Randle is going to be able to produce, produce well. Tom Thibodeau needs to do something to slow down Trey Young. He may need to have like a delayed trap in the half court. They have to do something because what he's doing to this defense, he's picking them apart. He's getting exactly what he wants in any situation that he wants, and he's finding his teammates. So they have to be able to bump him around, get physical with Trey Young, Make him frustrated a little bit. And then you go ahead and, and send a double team at him so you can be able to create different matchups, especially on the fast break. Because if you double team a guy and he throws the ball away, you're now off to the races. Those are easy baskets that you can be able to accumulate and, and really like pad your lead. So they have to go ahead and do that. They really have to get out and transition to score some points. Next game after this is going to be the Nets and the Celtics. Okay, Celtics got a game. They got a game. And they got a game because Jason Tatum played out of his mind. Can Jason Tatum score 55 in game four? Can he score 60? Because that's the only way that we're actually going to say that the Celtics have a shot. Now, granted, like I said, the, the Nets defense is atrocious. But they have the firepower to be able to overcome that. They almost did. If it wasn't for Jason Tatum's 50, they lose that game. The Celtics lose that game, and we're having a different conversation here. We're saying that the Celtics need to pack it up because they're down 3-0. The Nets don't have to do much. They can send the bench mob out there and get a dub. Like There's a lot of different trolling or things that can be able to happen based on you know, what we're seeing here, what we're seeing in regards to how this series has played out in regards to what the Celtics can be able to do to even compete. It's, it's tough. It's not an easy situation for them. Jalen Brown is hurt. They don't have much offense. Evan Fournier still does not look comfortable in a Celtics uniform. I don't blame them. So they have a lot of issues. That bench mob is terrible, especially led by Grant Williams. Uh, No, no, no. On to the nightcap, though. We have Clippers and Mavs game four. Luka almost had a triple-double, 40-point triple-double last game. Came up short. The Clippers 
played a, a, a great game. You know, the, their big two stepped up the way they're supposed to, and they took control. But are they going to be able to win this game? Can they repeat that performance and get this series tied 2-2 going back to Staples? No, I don't. <laughs> I think the Mavs are going to win this game. They're going to roll the, the Clippers 120-107. Luka is just Luka. I think Jalen Brunson has another big game. I think Finney Smith is going to break out of the little slump that he's in as well. So there's a lot of factors in regards to who's going to win this game. I, I just think that Rick Carlisle is a better coach. I think he's better defensively as well as strategically over Ty Lue. Ty Lue may be a quote-unquote player's coach. But so is um, Rick Carlisle. And what he's done with this team is is nothing short of remarkable. So um, Clippers will be that much closer to going back to the basement where they're going to need the space heaters and dehumidifiers and first down jackets because it gets very cold. It gets very moldy in the basement. You know, you, you got to make sure that you're, you're, you're protecting it. You're taking care of what's going on, making sure that, you know, there's no water spillage that's going out of, out of that dehumidifier. You got to make sure you throw that water out. Like, they got they got stuff to worry about in the offseason. They really do. They really do. And before we move on, uh, the game just got finalized. Utah wins against the Memphis Grizzlies in game three, 121 to 111. Good fight by, by Memphis. They did keep it close late in the fourth quarter, but then Utah started to pull away. Mike Conley, 27 points. Donovan Mitchell, 29 points. Shot 9 to 23. Terrible. Uh, you know, the, the starters, they did their thing, man. Everybody had double figures. Rudy Gobert does Rudy Gobert things. 15 points, 14 rebounds. He shot 7 of 8 from the field, which is pretty impressive. Five fouls. So, Rudy had a good game. I, I, I will give Rudy that. Had a good game. Uh... Jordan Clarkson had a better game today, 5 of 11, 15 points. He struggled, struggled the last, you know, game or so. So he's back on track. And maybe we see the end of the Memphis Grizzlies here because if Donovan Mitchell and Mike Conley are going to be able to play like this, play this well, there's really no space for Memphis left in these playoffs. So, you know, kudos to them for getting here, but... It's a it's an arduous road that they're on. John Morant, the point guard, another great game for him. Twenty eight points, three rebounds, seven assists. Uh, Valachunas had ten and thirteen. Dylan Brooks, who continues to surprise me, twenty seven points. So they they're definitely doing some good things. Mister Tripleot, Grayson Allen, <laughs> had seventeen points off the bench. So they have some guys that can be able to fill it up. They have some scores, but you know, talent-wise, they just don't really stack up with Utah. And, and that's that's the truth. That backcourt alone is just way more impressive than what John Morant and company are doing right now. Not saying that they can't get there, but right now, they're just not, they're not ready. But the playoff experience is going to be really, really good for them. So kudos to them for, for getting it done. So for Monday, we have game four against the... Wizards and Sixers, we all know what's, what's going to happen here. Sixers win, Sixers sweep, send the Wizards home. They can be able to call Merlin and whoever the hell they want to do to make them feel better, but it's it's over. It's over. And then you have different question marks. Is what are you going to do with Westbrook? Is he a guy that's going to stay next year? Are you going to look to trade him? Is Bradley Beal happy? Can you retain him? I know he signed that long-term contract, but maybe he might be trying to angle his way out. We never know. The fact that they made the playoffs, I think a lot of people are content with that. And that's fine. You don't have to have a championship outlook on your season or whatever to, to deem it a success. That's fine. But they have to do something about this roster. They need to add something. They need more firepower. They need more rim protection. They need more outside shooting. There's a lot that Washington needs. So, you know, it's it's not an easy thing, but eh, 
That's why I get paid the big bucks. I just can sit here and talk about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's so that's fine. Um Grizzlies and Jazz game four. Grizzlies are at home. As they were for this game as well, but didn't really pan out for them. Do I feel that the Grizzlies can be able to win this game? Yes, I do. I think the Grizzlies will win this game. I think John ja Moran has 35 points, 9 assists, 7 rebounds, couple steals. But I know that this kid is going to will himself, will his team to not take that L. It's a very important game for Memphis. I call this the swing game where, you know, after that decisive game four victory, it's a best out of three series. So it, it might not necessarily be the team that's the best. It may be the team that's playing the best in regards to their, their chemistry, their overall flow of the game, how they're knocking down shots, how they're creating shots for each other, how they're making shots what type of shots they're making, what are their percentages from here to here. Like, it's a lot of different factors, man, a lot of different factors. So we'll see exactly what happens. I have a show on Tuesday, so we'll go ahead and, and preview those on Tuesday uh, as well as, you know, give you my opinions, my takes, um, live updates in regards to what's going on with the game. So it's always fun. I love playoff time. Because it's the, it's where the money is made. It's where superstars are created. It's where legends are are built. It's where legacies start, man. You know, so there's a lot at stake for a lot of players in these in these playoffs, man. Chris Paul, is he gonna be back to normal ever again? Is the unholy trinity <laughs> in Brooklyn gonna win a championship? Like, you know, I mean, there's there's such a there's so many plots and storylines here that it's really it makes for great basketball man it really does really does and like I said I can't wait until Tuesday Lakers Suns Celtics Nets Trailblazers Nuggets it's it's, it's gonna be it's gonna be a good one so I can't wait I can't wait to break it down but I also want to give a shout out to my Mets they are playing well right now scored a lot of runs tonight and they're in first place so that's lit it's definitely lit. And my New York Islanders, yeah, they took a loss tonight, but I have a very, very good feeling that they're not going to take more losses. I think they're going to maybe take one and then just run the table from here. So, you know, go Islanders. Let's get this done. Let's get it going. But that wraps up the show for tonight. Definitely a quick recap, NBA preview. Um, there's a lot of good games on that happened tonight, a lot of good games on Friday, a lot of plots and subplots that are that are starting to turn, man. So playoff basketball is here. I love it. We're gonna continue to cover it. I'm gonna continue to talk about it. I'm gonna continue to bash the Clippers until they prove me wrong. So, you know. Let's see. I'm very, very interested to see what happens in that series. If they can be able to really come back from an 0-2 hole and win. Wouldn't that be something? Wouldn't that change the narrative of what the Clippers are? <laughs> I couldn't even say that with a straight face. So I want everybody to have a great Memorial Day weekend. You know, have some hot dogs and burgers and beer and cool out. Wear your mask. Don't get into trouble. Have fun with your family. Watch some playoff basketball. And I'll see y'all next week, Tuesday, where we'll talk more basketball. We'll talk, you know, other trending topics that are going on as well. So until then, stay safe. Stay cool. Peace. You can catch me on Instagram and Twitter at All Even Podcast. Listen to the show on Podbeam, Amazon Music, Spotify, and wherever you find your podcasts available. And check out my YouTube channel, All Even Podcast. And don't forget to like, share, and hit that subscribe button.